leather jacket and their new mobile phone, courtesy of the taxpayers who have had monies extracted from their wallets under the threat of incarceration in order for that money to be redistributed to others. And, of course, you are aware that the big story over the last 24 hours is what Mitt Romney had to say in a private fundraiser at a millionaire's home down in Florida. Apparently there's something seedy about Mitt Romney raising funds from millionaires, but there's nothing seedy or suspect about Barack Obama palling around with George Clooney and Jay-Z and Beyonce and having $36,000 a plate fundraisers with Hollywood elites and Wall Street moguls. Apparently nothing suspicious or problematic uh, about that. But it is when a Republican happens to do exactly uh, the same thing. Now, I want to I grab my stuff here. i got to get to the right stack. By the way, the earliest, this is a throwaway, but this is an interesting little thing. The highest temperature, this is our catastrophic global warming alert for the day, the highest temperature ever recorded on Earth was 134 degrees in 1913 in Death Valley, California. Now, don't forget, this is way, way back there when CO2 levels were still safe. That's when we had the highest temperature ever recorded on the face of the globe. Rasmussen, by the way, still has Mitt Romney up by two points in the presidential uh, race. Paul Ryan out there on the campaign trail, Dover, New Hampshire, accidentally referred to the economic plan of the campaign as the Ryan Romney uh, plan, economic plan. Uh, And that's what it is. I mean, it is the Ryan Romney uh, economic plan because uh, Paul Ryan is the one who's provided the the skeletal structure, the muscle and the tissue and the bones of an economic recovery plan. Now, by the way, when it comes to Obamacare, remember uh, Mitt Romney started to waffle a bit on that, say, well, there's a parts I like. Uh, And Paul Ryan at the Values Voter Summit over the weekend said, nope, we are repealing that puppy every last bit of it on day one. We're going to work on repealing that. It's still favored by likely voters, 53% to 43%. Rasmussen reports likely voters still want that puppy repealed. And Mitt Romney in this fundraising excerpt we're going to play here in just a second, he was talking about how he wins independence. That's what his whole point was. The 47%, I can't get them. They're never going to vote for me. They're only going to vote for Obama because he gives them goodies and lollipops. So I've got to get the people that are in the middle. Well, here are the independents on the repeal of Obamacare. They want it 52 to 41 by 11%. So independents want Obamacare repealed by a higher margin even than the general public does. This is a winner. Obamacare repeal, full repeal. It is a winner for the Romney-Ryan campaign. And Americans, these are likely voters now, they, ha- they haven't been fooled by all the bilge coming out of the Obama administration by a, a measure of f- 52 to 20. They believe that Obamacare is going to increase health care costs. They're not buying the swill that it's going to bend the cost curve downward. They're not buying it. They're not believing that smoke. 52 to 20 percent, they know it's going to increase health care costs. It is going to reduce rather than improve the quality of health care, 46 to 22. So twice as many people are convinced that Obamacare is going to make health care not only more expensive, but worse. This is a winner. And they believe that it's going to increase deficit spending 51 to 16. You talk about a message that is a winning message. Repeal, repeal, repeal uh, Obamacare. But you've got uh, liberals out there in the tank for President Obama. Here's a story about a professor at Brevard Community College who actually forced her class to sign a pledge to vote for President Obama. She downloaded it off the Internet. She circulated it among her class to her class and said, you have to sign this, forced them to sign a pledge to vote for President Obama and Democrats all up and down the ticket. And in so doing, she violated the election laws in Florida. This is what the election law in Florida says. No officer or employee of the state. She's at Brevard Community College, so she's an employee of the state. No employee of the state shall use his or her official authority or influence for the purpose of interfering with an election or influencing another person's 
vote. So she has broken the law, uh, and we'll see if she gets into any trouble for it. I'm guessing not so much. Can you imagine if a professor had done the same thing for Mitt Romney? Now, you probably haven't he- heard about this. I bet you haven't even heard about this, about this teacher doing that. If, Mitt, if somebody had done this for Mitt Romney, do you think you would have heard about it? It would have been the lead story on the national news. Now, getting to this 47%, Gallup's got a poll out today where 54% of the American people believe that the government is trying to do too many things. Only 39% said the government should do more. So once again, Mitt Romney, if you're listening, the American people believe 54 to 39, we have too much government. Government is too big. Government is too intrusive. Government is trying to do too many things that ought to be left to individuals, to families, churches, and uh, businesses. And New York Times got a story out about Mitt Romney. He said 47% of the American people pay no income tax. New York Times... Annie Lowry, today, Mitt Romney is absolutely correct that about half of American households do not pay federal income tax. So don't let anybody lie to you. People are going to out there be lying to you. Mitt Romney represented, misrepresented things. That's not factual. That's not true. New York Times, Mitt Romney is absolutely correct that about half of American households do not pay federal income tax. That is the New York Times. Now, let's play the clip that has uh, created so much dust in the air. This is clip number one. Now, the audio is not absolutely great on this. This, by the way, was released by uh, the grandson of Jimmy Carter, who's unemployed. He's one of the 47% pay a no-income tax, living off the taxpayers, doesn't have a job. So he's got time to fool around, bootleg this video, and get it off to whoever released this, Mother Jones, who released it to the public. So they... The, the audio quality is not that great, but I wanted you to hear Mitt Romney in his own words. He's talking to fundraisers about four months ago. Now, I don't know how long Mother Jones has had this video, but this is kind of their September pri- uh, surprise trying to ambush uh, Mitt Romney. Here he talks about the 47% of the American people who do not pay income tax exactly right, according to the New York Times. Let's listen. Here's Mitt Romney. There are 47% of the people who vote for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that, that they are victims, who believe that government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. But that's it's an entitlement, and the government should give it to them. And they will vote for this president no matter what. And, and I mean, the president starts off with 48, 49, 48. He starts off with a huge number. Uh, these are people who pay no income tax. 47% of Americans pay no income tax. So our message of low taxes doesn't connect. And he'll be out there talking about tax cuts for the rich. I mean, that's what they sell every, every four years. And, uh, and so my job is not to worry about those people. I'll never convince them that they should take personal responsibility and care for their lives. What I have to do is convince the 5 to 10% in the center that are independents, that are thoughtful, that look at voting one way or the other, depending upon in some cases, emotion, whether they like the guy or not. So that is a Mitt Romney. And here, here's what I would suggest as a conservative response to what, what uh, Governor Romney uh, had to say, because it sounds like Governor Romney has given up on the 47%. It's like he's given up on them. He's saying they'll never vote for me. There's no way they'll vote for me. They're in the tank. They're in the pocket for Barack Obama. I do not believe that's true. And I would suggest to, to, to Governor Romney that he kind of retool his message just a little bit And, in fact, I sent a tweet out this morning saying, I think what Governor Romney should do at this point is don't talk to the media. The media is out to trip you up. They're out to trap you. They're out to destroy you. Uh, We've got professors at community colleges ordering their students to sign pledges to vote for Obama. The academia, the old media, they're in the tank for Obama. So they're out to trip you up. They're out to destroy you. Don't talk to them. Don't let them set the parameters of your responses. If they ask you a question, talk over their heads Talk around them. Talk directly to the 47%. Don't talk to the media. In fact, I suggested this about a week ago that what Mitt Romney, one of the mistakes he's making is talking to the media. Don't talk to the media. Don't let them establish the ground rules. Talk to us. Use the media because they can amplify your message. But don't even talk to them. Don't even be thinking about their reaction to what you're saying. Talk to us. Use the media to talk to us. This is an opportunity for Mitt Romney to use the media, because everybody's paying attention now, to use the media to talk to the 47%.
And I think the conservative message to the 47% is something like this. Look, we know we got a bad economy. We know it's affecting your household. We know that you would like to have a job and some of you don't. We know that you would like to have a better job and some of you feel trapped where you are. We know that you would like to make a higher wages, but the economy is making it difficult for your employer to do it. We are here for you. We know you, you desire a higher standard of living. You would like to be able to provide in a uh, more satisfactory way for your needs and the needs of your family. We hear that. We, uh, we, we want to respond to the hunger and the drive that you have to provide for yourself and your family. We are going to do everything in our power for you, the 47%, to get government out of the way so the economy can grow, the economy can take off, businesses can expand, jobs can be created, wages can be raised. We want that for you. We want that for your children. We want that for your grandchildren. So that's what we offer you, 47%. We offer you a growing economy. We're going to reduce regulation. We're going to reduce the taxes on those that create jobs so they can make more jobs for you. We're not doing it for them. We're doing it for you and your children that want good-paying jobs. That's why we're lowering the tax burden on the job creators so they'll have more money to spend on creating new jobs and raising your wages. We are here for you. We know that you want to achieve the American dream. That's your aspiration. You want a higher standard of living for yourself and your family. We hear that. We're going to do everything in our power to make it possible for you by using your hard work, your resolve, your commitment to do a better job of meeting the needs of you and your family. So Mitt Romney, uh, don't talk to the media. Talk directly to the 47%. Use the media to talk to the 47% and promise to help them fulfill the American dream. Back in two.